The first time I heard anything was in the mid to late 70s. An outfitter and I were riding up Fan Creek in the northwest section of the park. Up the drainage in Stellaria Creek, we heard a sound that just kept going and going. It was probably a mile away. It filled the whole valley up, kind of like 1,000 elk going to their death. I couldn't believe this thing had that much volume for that long a period of time. He had never heard anything like it, neither. A couple of weeks later, I was coming out from Sportsman Creek, taking a trail which comes out of Fan Creek. I was 11 miles back in, up high in a subalpine fir meadow complex. I was on a steep side hill with horses and woods, but down below about 40 to 50 yards, there was a kind of fairly flat meadow with dense subalpine thickets. There were these low fir growths that have a centerpiece tree and then everything kind of cone shapes to ground. They were about 20 yards wide or so. The horses were flaring their noses and snorting, like they do when a grizzly bear is real close, but I could see fairly good all around and I couldn't see one. So I started looking down below me, as the horses were really agitated. They were wanting to get out of there. I held them, but only with effort. I looked down to see where the bear was. All I saw was a deer at edge of thicket. All at once it bolted and started jarring ahead perpendicular to me. Right then, coming out the other side of the thicket, was this thing that was running on two feet. It was black like a bear and it had long arms. It wasn't running very fast. It ran to one thicket, then went at angle out of that one to another thicket about 50 yards away. It kept hitting these thickets trying to get away from me. I've never seen a bear do that. They'll always take a straight line. The first thing I thought was bear, but right away I realized this black shaggy thing wasn't a bear. This thing was smart. I've never seen an animal trying to pick up protection as it fled. It wasn't that tall. It looked like it was like six foot, maybe six foot six. The side of the face looked like it had a lot of hair. Most of the time it was angling away, so I only got a good look at the head for probably the first 10 steps. The proportions of the torso looked stocky. I noticed the arms swing more than a human's would and it didn't have the elbows bent. This was no hoax. I've ridden over 50,000 miles in the backcountry on horses and I encountered a lot of bears. The horses and I were all convinced. That thing was absolutely not one of them. I lived and worked in Yellowstone National Park, Old Faithful from 1981 to 84. I worked as night security for the lodging facility located in the park. We were on duty after the law enforcement rangers went home. Just before my shift, a couple of tourists approached and asked me a question. They wanted more information about bears in the park. They wanted to know if the bears walked upright while feeding in the water. The couple stated that they saw a bear pull vegetation from a pond and then carry it to shore while walking on two legs. They said when it noticed the couple, it turned and looked at them from about 30 yards away. I showed them photographs of some bears and they became very upset with me, accusing me of thinking they were stupid. Since they were offended, I suggested they draw what they saw. Sure enough, the lady drew a Bigfoot-like creature. So I wrote a report for them and filed it in the drop box at the ranger station. The ranger station opened at 7 in the morning and my shift ended at 7, as well. So when I clocked out, I went to the ranger station to inquire about my report. It was no later than 7.30 but the ranger in charge at the time said he did not receive my report. He then stated the trailhead was just closed for a study of problem bears. I thought that was strange, so me and a security buddy went to check out the trail anyway. When we reached the trail to Mallard Lake, it was closed. There were cars from the park that I had not seen before, blocking the trail. I kept inquiring until my boss from Mammoth Hot Springs told me to drop it. He said, he had seen my report and the park was aware of it. The subject was something many were aware of but would never talk about. To do so would be a job ender. Most law enforcement rangers were friendly with me because they knew I had completed the law enforcement academy. But I still felt weird talking about it. Though this was clearly not a bear sighting, I was told to let it go. So I did. 
Back then I was a young guy with no interest in the Sasquatch. Years later I learned a highly respected backcountry ranger made a Bigfoot report. Me, I prefer to be anonymous. Not sure why I feel that way, as it was many years ago. It was such a strange experience. I'm nearly 60 now, so that was a long time ago. Still in some ways, it seems like yesterday. In the spring of 1988, my boyfriend and I, along with other college friends, decided to spend our whole spring break hiking and camping in the Sierra Nevada mountains. One of our friend's fathers grew up in that area and recommended a spot for us to go to near a place called Round Lake. We hiked into the mountains and had a beautiful view of the lake. There were seven of us on that trip. We were only going to be there for a couple of days. At about 8 p.m. on the second day, we had our dinner and we were just finishing up the dishes. One of the other couples went for a walk with the excuse of finding a spot to watch the sunset. Yeah right. Well, an hour or so later they came running back into camp saying that they saw a monster. They said that they were on an overhang on the side of the mountain. They were sitting on the rock ledge just chatting when they noticed a pine tree start shaking wildly. The trees weren't tightly packed in that area, and there were many bare spots. So the pine tree that was shaking was only in a small patch. As they were sitting and watching it they would catch glimpses of a large black figure. They thought that was a bear. Then the shaking tree stopped. Then they saw the weirdest looking bear come running out of the woods but it wasn't running normally. It was deformed he thought because it was propelling itself forward with its front legs instead of using its back legs. As they continued watching they realized that it wasn't a bear but, as one of them described it, the biggest freaking chimp I've ever seen. Then it went from mid-stride on all fours to casually walking on two feet. It stopped and stared out over the valley and then plopped down on its butt with its back to them. They said that it was at least five and a half feet tall sitting down. It had seen them but it didn't care that they were behind it. My boyfriend said that sounds like a Bigfoot. After he said that everyone piped up, wanting to go and see it. So the whole group walked to the spot. Well, by that time it was gone. My boyfriend was staring off into the distance and said, do you guys see this? We all looked towards the dark sky to the east and there were spinning lights, but whatever held these lights could not be seen. The lights stopped and at that moment we all heard a loud moan to the right of us that seemed to go on for about 45 seconds or so. When the moan stopped it was followed by a higher pitched whoop and then the spinning light started again. This seemed to go on for maybe a minute. Again, when they stopped a moan started again and this time it came from the left of us. Again it ended in a whoop. When it stopped we all looked at where the lights had been and we all clearly noticed that the lights were much closer to us. We were all amazed by it. Then again when the light stopped the moan started to the right of us. This continued on, but each time the lights were getting closer to us. It started coming from all around us, even above us further up the mountain. We were all freaked out and someone suggested that we should get back to camp. When we got back to camp, we should have packed up and left. But for some reason, we all thought our campsite would somehow protect us. We talked about our cool experience, but not one of us said maybe we should leave the area. We continued chatting about the experience. I don't recall feeling fear yet, oddly enough, someone said he saw something in the woods darting from tree to tree. Someone asked if it was Bigfoot. But my friend said it was glowing a silvery white color and was only four feet tall. Then he yelled look. It's right there. We were scanning the woods and all feeling a little freaked out. I saw the look of shock on my boyfriend's face. So I looked where he was looking and I saw the silvery white being 8 to 10 feet up the tree with its hands holding onto the trunk. The light from the fire wasn't lighting up the whole tree so what I saw wasn't very clear but it did have five fingers that appeared to have suction cups on the tips. I saw one side of its bulbous head and one eye. The eye was large like the size of a baseball. The head was the size of a large party balloon. Minutes later we all heard a large crack of a tree limb. 
One of the guys said he thought he could see red eyes glowing. He said it moved back behind the tree. Then all of a sudden one of the girls screamed. We all jumped in fright. We looked in the direction where she was looking. There it was. A Bigfoot. It was standing there staring at us, as it just swayed back and forth. We all estimated that it was well over 11 feet in height. It was breathing very heavily. Its mouth was pursed in a downward position. It inhaled through its nose and then exhaled, and as it exhaled it growled loudly. Then we heard the sound of the brush move and a brightly lit figure appeared. We watched as the big foot turned and walked out of the campsite toward the figure. That was our chance to go. None of us packed. We just ran for the cars and left. A few of us went back the next day to get our stuff. Nothing was touched, not even the coolers of food. None of us, as far as I know, ever went back to the location. Most of us still keep in touch, but we rarely ever talked about that night. I'm 50 years old and I grew up in a small suburban town called Deer Park, Texas. It is located on the southeast side of Houston. This incident occurred on a summer night in 1985. I was 13 years old at the time. I took a road trip with the Boy Scouts to Enchanted Rock State Park in Central Texas to camp out for the weekend. On the first day we were there, and after setting up camp, we took a hike off of a 300-foot cliff face made of solid granite. We hiked through natural caverns near the end of the day. While walking back to camp we noticed a couple of nature trails just off the main park road that we could hike. But the scoutmaster told us that we weren't going to have time to explore those trails on this trip. On the second night, four of us decided to sneak out and explore those trails after the scoutmaster went to sleep. Around 2 a.m. we rallied on the road outside of camp. We began walking toward the trails, following the main park road, which stretched around the outskirts of the park, to the nature trails. We had a couple of flashlights between us. The road we were on was about 14 feet wide and made of asphalt. It was a full moon that night, so we could see fairly well once we got away from the camp lights and our eyes adjusted to the darkness. We were walking shoulder to shoulder down this road, talking and joking around as young boys do. About 15 minutes or so after we left camp, and before we could reach the trails, we were startled by rustling and movement from the brush on top of the hill to our left. We saw three deer crash in the bushes, run down the hill, and scurry frantically across the road. We heard loud popping, cracking, and crashing sounds on top of that same hill. We all froze in place. A sense of dread came over me. At that moment, a dark figure broke through the brush line, sprinted down the hill, and appeared to be chasing the deer across the road. In one long stride, it crossed the entire road. It was running on two feet, but after crossing the road it crouched down on all fours and seemed to gain more speed. It disappeared into the brush. It had to be at least nine feet tall, and I estimated it to be four to five feet across the shoulders. It also had a very short neck that appeared to be sunken into its shoulders. Massive muscles could be seen through the thin dark body hair, which was shimmering in the direct moonlight. Its muscular build and definition were impressive to say the least and would make any bodybuilder look scrawny. The head was massive and conical at the top. If I were to guess, I would say it had to weigh about 800 pounds or more. A few seconds later, it passed in front of us again. We all noticed an ungodly pungent odor. It was like a combination of feces, urine, and garbage. We all panicked and sprinted full speed back toward camp. We were constantly checking over our shoulders to see if it decided to follow us. We all stopped short of camp to gain our composure and catch our breath. We needed to discuss what we had just witnessed. We all agreed not to tell anybody for fear of getting in trouble. We also feared that nobody would believe us and accuse us of making up the story. We broke camp at 8 a.m. that next morning and headed home. We never talked about it again, and we lost touch with each other shortly after the incident.
Personally, I've only told only a couple people about this sighting over the years for fear of being ridiculed. I have nothing to hide or be ashamed of and I'm too damned old to be worried about what some non-believers might think. I'm of Native American and German heritage, precisely Cherokee and Choctaw with a small amount of Irish, Scottish, and Bohemian thrown into the mix. I've always loved the outdoors whether it be camping, hunting, fishing, or hiking. That is, until this damn creature took it all away from me. I worked as an oil well service operator in a Texas oil field for 25 years. I then went to work for the United States Postal Service, retiring in 2017 after 23 years of service. My encounter happened in 1974 and I was 21 years old. I never told anyone about this encounter and I'm still dealing with some post-traumatic stress. I planned a vacation to Beaver's Bend State Park in southeast Oklahoma during the first week of March 1974. My wife was six months pregnant, so I planned a tent camp on the Mountain Fork River, below the dam on Broken Bow Lake for four days. So I rented the farthest south tent site, which was only 30 yards from a cement dam on the river. This made the upper portion deeper for swimming, kayaking, and fishing. We had beautiful weather in the low to mid 50s and highs of 65 to 70 degrees. The first day or two were just terrific. We had fresh fish for breakfast and dinner. On the morning of the third day, I got up at 5 a.m. and made a pot of coffee. I had one cup and then grabbed my tackle box, rod, reel, and a five-gallon bucket to put my catch in, and then walked down to the cement dam where I'd fished the first two days. I've been fishing for about 25 minutes. I had a three-pound smallmouth bass and two rainbow trout, about two pounds each. I planned to catch one more fish and then call it quits. I went to make another cast when my lure hung up on what I thought was a tree limb. So I turned to look up to see where my lure had caught the limb. All I could see was a wall of cinnamon brown hair, about four feet from me. What the fuck? My lure had hung up on the upper left chest of something that I did not know existed. It was a giant creature, at least 10 to 11 feet tall, 5 feet wide across the shoulders and at least 1100 pounds. Its biceps were as big as my waist. My eyes moved up to its face. It had a conical head. The eyes were huge and red. It was looking down at me, snarling its teeth which were as big as a horse's and had only slightly pronounced eye teeth. Its head looked to be two and a half times the size of mine. I could not move. I could feel and hear a very low growl that seemed to rattle my bones with a pressure all over my body that I can't explain. I truly believed that my life was over. I couldn't speak or scream. But I remember thinking, oh my god. I'm so sorry for hurting you. Then like turning off a light switch, everything went black. Evidently I passed out. I think it was about 6.30 am when I woke up. I felt so drained of energy and I had a terrible headache. I sat up, looked around, and saw that my tackle box had been smashed flat. My rod was broken into four pieces and the three fish that I caught were taken out of my bucket. After regaining my composure, I found two huge footprints where the beast had been standing. I had a measuring tape, so I measured both prints. They were 22 and a half inches long and 10 inches across the ball of the foot. The heel was 6 inches across. Damn! I'd never seen a footprint that huge. Then I realized that I had to get the hell away from there. I picked up all my broken fishing equipment and carried it to a trash bin. I walked back to camp, poured myself another cup of coffee, and waited for my wife to wake up. I poured her a cup of coffee and she asked how was the fishing this morning. Well, I told her that during the night, someone had come into our camp and taken all of my fishing gear. She was pissed. But I figured that was better than me trying to explain what I had actually seen and what really happened down at the river. 
I was feeling very lucky to still be breathing. So, after another cup of coffee, I told her that I wasn't feeling quite up to it anymore, that I was just ready to go home. I can't help but believe that this creature had been watching me fishing and it wanted my fish. To this day, I still can't believe how it snuck up behind me. That was my last time camping or fishing. I gave away most of my fishing gear. Now all I have is an interest in finding out more about what took my love of the outdoors away. What I'm about to tell you is absolutely true. My name is Ingrid. I'm a 21-year-old from Germany and I was taking holiday in Canada. This was always a dream for me to explore and experience this large and beautiful country. It was really a pleasure for me. I arrived here in August and had the best time of my life until this Wednesday. But now it's turning into an absolute nightmare. I always love driving late at night, especially on relatively remote roads. That's why I chose to take the 502 northbound from Fort Francis to Dryden that evening. It was December 19, 2018, around 11.40 p.m., on a long bent part of the road. Suddenly, a semi with its hazards flashing, stood on the right side, nearly in the ditch. I stopped in front of the truck, got out, and asked the driver if I could help him. I immediately noticed that the front left part of the rig was really heavily damaged. The headlight and grille were broken and the hood was pushed backward and smashed. A bit of the windshield and the hood was covered in blood. I then realized that there was more blood on the road as well. I could see fairly well in the dark, with the small amount of light from my tail lights, his intact right headlight, and his marker lights. Oh God, he hit a bear. Was my first thought from the amount of damage I could see. I walked up to the driver's side door and knocked a few times. He didn't answer. At first, I thought that perhaps he left to get some help. But then I remembered that we were in the middle of nowhere, and Dryden is like 50 kilometers away, so he'd more likely use a cell phone or CB to call for help. I knocked again, still no response. Then I opened the door. The driver was huddled back in the cabin. He was shaking. His skin was pale. He looked like he had so much fear and shock. Do you need help? Looks like you had a really serious accident here. Are you injured? I asked him. No response. Hello, are you all right, sir? I'm not sure, he mumbled. Does anything hurt? No, but I. I hit it. I see that, I said. I don't think that the bear is still alive, to be honest. It wasn't a bear, he responded. There was so much fear in his voice. I was getting confused. Are there elk in this part of Ontario? I'm not a native so that was my first thought. It's okay, you're in shock. Take a breath, I responded. Did you call someone? He didn't even react. I left him alone in his rig and went to my van to get my cell phone. I was glad that I even received service in this part of the province. I told the operator what happened. She assured me that she was sending an officer and an ambulance to the scene. She asked me which operator the truck was driving. I didn't know what she meant, so I couldn't give her an answer. She said that there would be roadside assistance coming as well. I then hung up and went to the semi-driver to tell him that I called for help. The only thing he did was nod. I got my flashlight out of the car and searched for the dead animal. I was still convinced that he had hit a bear. I was very curious about what he really hit and was determined to tell him that it was a bear. The blood was spread all over the road and I could see where the bear was flinching. Then I saw its body. Holy crap. That is indeed a really large bear, I thought to myself. The creature was approximately 3 meters or about 9 feet 10 inches long. The head was partially decapitated and its face was like nothing I'd ever seen before. It was like I was looking at a gorilla, 
human-type face. It was so unreal. The teeth looked like what you'd see on the great white shark. Its eyes were partly closed but it was like you could see the pupils glow underneath. They weren't really glowing but it's the best way I can describe it. It was some ape-human hybrid. Have you ever felt really uncomfortable? All of a sudden. That's what I was feeling then. I didn't believe in Bigfoot before, but I watched something about it a few years ago on a television show. I couldn't believe what I saw, but I knew exactly what I was looking at. I never thought that I'd experienced something like this in my entire life. This can't be real. Where's the hidden camera? I hoped there would be a TV crew coming out of the woods to admit their hoax but there was no TV crew. There I was, alone with the truck driver and this thing. I went back to my car and I vomited into the road and sat in the driver's seat. In the distance, I saw the emergency lights flickering. It was a police officer or an Ontario Provincial Police Patrolman. I can't remember. He asked me what happened and I told them exactly what I'm telling you all. At first, he was very suspicious about my story, but I knew, that he knew, I was speaking the truth. He went back to his patrol car and radioed something in, then went to the trucker. In the distance, I saw more headlights. The whole crew from the fire department and another police car showed up. The police officer was directing the men at the fire department to the rig, like he wanted them to only take care of the broken semi and its driver. He then talked to the other police officer and I could see that he went pale immediately. The moment the first officer ended his sentence, I was absolutely sure about the fact that they both knew that these creatures exist. I knew that they had a plan of what to do and what not to do, in cases like this. I noticed none of them went to the place where I told the first officer, the body of this creature was located. The second officer came up to me and told me that I had to follow him to the police department, for a full report. So I drove behind him to Dryden. While we drove up to the city, maybe after 40 kilometers, a convoy of dark vehicles passed us at high speed. I think they were headed to the scene where we were coming from. The junction on 502 and 594 was blocked by officers and no car was allowed to drive on the 502 southbound. Arriving at the police station, the officer took me to the interrogation room and offered me something to drink. I had to wait until someone arrived to interview me. He said I had to give up my phone and my personal belongings. I refused at first, because I didn't understand why but his voice got very specific but I soon handed over my things. After what felt like an eternity, a man in a suit came into the room. He looked really odd a bit like an ill person because of his grayish skin, bald head, and sort of sunken cheeks. He had a thick Quebec accent and spoke gently and calmly, without any expression at all. I had to recall all details of what I experienced, all of my personal information, and the purpose of my journey to Canada. He took my fingerprints and even a sample of my saliva. I felt like a criminal, so ashamed and uncomfortable like I'd done something horrible. Then I had to sign a document, like a non-disclosure agreement, but there weren't any coat of arms banners or stamps on it. After that, he looked dead in my eyes, and asked if I'd seen what I had seen. I said, yes. His tone got really stern, and he asked me again. I knew then that I had to answer, no, to his question. After that, he explained to me that they will know everything I do. It was crazy that they were so open about it. Then he left the room. Shortly after that, a female officer came in and gave me back my personal things. She explained to me that when they checked my immigration information, the system informed them that I have to leave Canada by January. It was more like a command for me to take a direct flight to Germany. My current ETA got declined. I can't apply for any future ETA and even my ETSTA as well. I can't believe it. Just because I've seen this thing, I can't travel to North America for the rest of my life. I am now on a blacklist like terrorists. When I turned on my phone, 
it sent me to the first instruction screen, like when I first took it out of the box. The same with my laptop. So these people erased everything on my electronic devices to be sure that there isn't any information going public. All of my pictures are gone. They even turned all the things in my van upside down, like they were searching for evidence. I'm really sure I am being taped right now. I'm lucky I could write my story about this, to be honest. Please wish me all your luck. The truth must be spoken. I won't be intimidated by anyone but I also won't risk my life. I saw something about three months ago. It all lasted no more than 10 seconds but it is etched into my memory. Uneventful but very real and spectacular. I've told nobody yet. I never felt like I should bring it up and it was meant just for me. It was August 2018 at 6.10am in upstate New York in the Adirondacks area. I would go out late and sometimes very late for a smoke. I would walk around in silence listening to and enjoying nature. So, one morning I go out the back door for coffee and a smoke. I'm standing at the back door breathing in the fresh morning air and take a sip of coffee. Nothing is out of the ordinary. Birds chirping and critters moving about. Then I hear a snort like a deer would do. I look to where it came from. Maybe from 100 feet or less. Though it was still mostly dark, I could see about 20 feet into the tree line. I didn't see a deer. Within two seconds of the first snort, I hear another one as I am still looking for a deer. Something stepped out from behind a tree. Its left side was facing me. All I could see was a large black shape. It stood there for a few seconds. I know what I was looking at but I had no reaction, other than watching. It made a noise, but not the snorting sound. Then it walked into the woods. Not only did I see and hear it walk away, I even felt its steps in the ground. Like the ground was hollow and vibrated. No breaking or snapping branches, just footsteps. Almost like an echo in the ground. After about six steps, it was gone. Nothing changed same birds and critters still moving about. I stood there processing what had just happened. Other than the echoing thuds of footsteps, it was silent. After a while, I walked forward slowly to the spot. Not sure what I would see. But there was nothing. Where it had been standing, the ground was covered with fallen old branches. Not even a ninja could have walked through here silently. I judged the height at an easy 8 feet tall based on its head height to the trees. This thing was massive. I walked back to the picnic table and sat on it. After the coffee and smoke, I went to go inside. As I reached for the doorknob, I feel like I should turn around. So I did as I scanned the tree line again. Nothing. I faced the door to turn the knob and there was a flash of light, like a camera flash. As if someone behind me just took a picture. Instantly I got goosebumps. My hair stood on end and I felt like I couldn't get inside quick enough. It had to have watched me for at least 10 seconds before it moved. I haven't seen it since but I could tell it wanted me to know it was there. My grandfather didn't talk much about his own experiences with Sasquatch. He grew up in the foothills of Appalachia in Tennessee. All he would say to my grandmother is that they were definitely real and she should never let her guard down. He said they would pace him from the tree line as he walked to high school from his home in the hills. This was a 6 foot 4, 300 pound mountain of a man. 
but these things made him feel an intense fear. Black bears he was wary of, but he didn't fear them. Even doing two full tours in Vietnam didn't put fear in him like Sasquatch did. The first time I encountered one was when I was young, and we were in the Appalachians visiting his family. He would take me hiking and we'd look for animal tracks near creek beds and streams. Occasionally we'd see bear tracks, which was the coolest thing ever when you're six. When we had our encounter, my grandfather noticed it first. I was too occupied with my immediate environment. I did notice that the birds had stopped singing and it was noticeably quiet. Just as I was looking up on the opposite side of the creek, I noticed something. Something dark in the dense foliage, standing next to one of the bigger trees. Immediately my grandfather took me by my shoulders and gently guided me back up the path while he kept nervously looking around. I had never seen that look of fear and stony tension in his face before. My grandfather had gotten a good look at it. It was just standing there. After I'd been put to bed that night, he told my grandmother what we saw in the deep woods. How it was most focused on watching me. He knew that if he had taken his eyes off me for just a second, it would have taken me and there wasn't a damn thing he could have done about it. We never went back to that spot in the deep woods and he never let me go anywhere again without me being in his sight. I was 14 and visiting my dad in Alberta, Canada, when my parents separated. Dad went to live in a small house of the grid. It was about the 30 minutes from the nearest town. This was his dream. And I experienced it with him every other weekend. We went hiking, hunting, kayaking, bird watching and all other outdoor activities. Sometimes we camped outside. That's when I saw it. Dad found a spot deep in the brush and we set up camp. When it got dark, we decided to sleep outside in our sleeping bags so we could watch the stars. Dad fell asleep almost immediately, but it wasn't that easy for me. I tried very hard to fall asleep that night. But in all honesty, despite the many camping trips with my dad already, I was still creeped out by the forest at night. That fear would keep me awake all night. At a certain point, when I was finally drifting into sleep, I heard something coming out of the woods and snapping branches loudly as it walked on towards us. Dad was in a deep sleep and I was pissing my pants. I thought a lost person was walking on towards our campsite. I opened my eyes a bit and I could see it. Only about 10 feet away from me was a giant, hairy creature that walked on two legs like a person. I wanted to scream in fear, but I tried to pretend I was asleep, praying it would ignore us and keep going by. In my opinion, the creature which I now know was a Sasquatch was attracted to the aroma of the meat dad had been cooking. I say that because it didn't seem the least bit interested in us. It seemed more interested in just slowly walking around our campsite, presumably looking for the food it thought we had. I must tell you though, not only was I terrified at the sight of the giant hairy man, I was also sickened by the terrible smell that was coming from that beast. The Bigfoot seemed to get bored after a while and disappeared into the darkness. I was trembling and wasn't able to sleep for the rest of the night. I didn't tell Dad anything until he woke up the next morning. I was afraid if I tried to wake him up during the night, the creature would notice that we were awake, maybe even hear us. I didn't want to find out how it would react if it did. When I told him about it, he just said it was probably a large bear walking around on its hind legs. I then described to him how the creature was extremely human-like and walked like a person would. He just said that I was either hallucinating from fear or that I wasn't aware that I was having a dream. To this very day, I know what I saw. It was about nine feet tall with extremely long and matted brown hair all over its body, including the face. It was a face that to me looked very human-like, in a primitive sort of way. I still remember the horrible odor that made me want to vomit. That was the longest and most terrifying night of my life. Afterwards though, I've come to honor the experience because I would come to realize that the creature was undoubtedly a Bigfoot and I was one of the few people who get the chance to see it.
up close, to all skeptics. I understand your incredulity, but I have experienced it firsthand. And there is no doubt that these creatures exist. Not only are they scary looking and very smelly, they are also a fascinating sight to behold. I feel that they are more like humans than apes, due to the appearance of the face. That was the scariest part. Not only was there a strange, giant creature lurking around our camp, but it was a very human-like, extremely hairy creature. Unfortunately, or maybe I should say fortunately, I never had another encounter since that camping trip 33 years ago but the image still stays clear in my head to this day. In fact, there are many nights that I have dreams while I am reliving the experience over and over. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a thumbs up and subscribe to help us grow. Thanks for watching.